What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show, Quest for Dough. I'm your host, Cody Pritchett. And on today's episode, I bring on Del Guthrie and Sean Despain. They are the founders of Nectar CBD Products. It's a really cool line of CBD products that's more towards beauty and for feminine care. So bath bombs, hand soaps, facial treatment stuff. I don't know, but it's really exciting. And their story behind how it got started and what led them to get to where they're at today and going forward is really exciting. They're really nice guys, and I think their story will be really interesting um, to listen to and to understand kind of what got them to where they're at. And so stay tuned, and I'm going to bring them on. Okay, what is up? So I am here with Del Guthrie and Sean Des- De- Sean Despain of Nectar CBD Products. What's up, guys? What's hey. going on, Cody? Um, I'm really excited. So um, when I started this whole podcast, Del reached out to me and said that they wanted to get their Nectar CBD Products company out there. And I was really intrigued and wanted to know more. So I was like, let's bring them on. Um, so... Yeah, let's get started. So tell me kind of a little bit, what is Nectar CBD Products? Nectar CBD Products is a medically endorsed CBD company. Um, We focus on beauty products and increasing the quality of people's lives versus just the quantity. Um, We're we're based here in Utah, obviously. And so our medical endorsement is from two different LDS doctors that support our product and the movement that we're doing. So Okay, awesome. Um, So I know when a lot of people hear CBD, they think marijuana. So kind of explain to me, what is CBD? Well, yeah, that's a good question. It could be confusing because it does come from, you know, the plant. The only difference is that we're getting strands of that plant that aren't psychoactive. So CBD stands for cannabinoid. And that's the strand of the plant that people actually need for a lot of different things like coping with anxiety, uh, helping with inflammation, uh, helping with sleep disorders. And that's actually why we've gone out and gotten that medical endorsement so that we can... uh, really prove that we have the right strands in the product that people need to uh, support those, you Uh, know, systems in the body that help with that. Awesome. Yeah. I know CBD oil is a big thing today um, because of those exact reasons and it doesn't have any of the THC. So it's not like, it's not a drug. Yeah. right. And and we can (laughs) use it and it it still helps with a lot of things. So kind of tell me, you know, you, you were telling me earlier that it's for like feminine products. So kind of explain who is like your person who would purchase a nectar cbd product and for what so the product line that we're coming up with next is very much about your skin so we've got face scrubs coming out we've got an eye serum we have things like bath bombs we're going to be doing all sorts of other products that have to deal with um you know i would mostly say feminine products because women are usually more likely to purchase those products right as guys, you know, like it takes a lot for us to really feel like we need to change our soap or our shampoo. Yeah. You know, I've only bought yeah. a couple bath bombs. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like I didn't even do yeah. a, a bath bomb until it was a CBD bath bomb. Right. But, you know, my girlfriend, on the other hand, she's buying the bath bombs, the creams, the lotions. I didn't even know what this stuff was. Okay. You know, so it's been a lot of research and finding out exactly what they're looking for, okay. our customers. And that really does seem to go back to topicals to increase the overall health and feeling of, of health. That makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, so you can find them on Instagram and on their website, which is, what is your website? NectarCBDProducts.com. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So that's kind of what Nectar CBD products, but now we're going to go back to the beginning. I want you guys to take me back to when you first got the idea, who contacted who, and we're just going to kind of go from there. And like I said earlier, I want you to do this as a journal, something like, Tell us the honest truth of what it took to start a CBD product company. Cause that doesn't sound easy. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so who, you know, take me back to the first idea or the first time it popped into your head. Mm. So it, wow. There's been so much that's gotten us to this point. Right. And it started with just both of us deciding that we needed to do something different from the direction we were already at because we were both getting really comfortable with things. So like, I, it's like, Go to the beginning. When was the first time you had the idea of starting a company? Right. Uh, It would actually be talking to a doctor back in Heber is where I grew up. Okay. And so it was really cool because 
I was looking to do a different, you know, get into something else besides construction is what I did before. Okay. And I talked to this doctor and she's like, oh, I'm getting into CBD. I'm doing all these studies. I'm posting them online on my website and my, my websites are disappearing. She'd done this two or three times and they were just disappearing. Interesting. It's really interesting. And it's, it's cool because that's the kind of stuff that I'm into. <laughs> right. And so I was like, wait, tell me more. And I, I went and started learning more about CBD. And she's like, you know, me and these doctors have been, you know, gathering in different areas and just communicating what we're learning because it's really hard to find information about CBD online. Okay. It's like, wow. So I started learning more about CBD from her and I had a buddy out in Heber that grew up there and he had been part of one of the manufacturers here. And so I learned some from him too. And when I was really excited about it, after learning a little bit more about the market, I reached out to him. And um, that was after me and Dell had met and talked about the opportunity to go into CBD together. And he could tell you a little bit more about that because that's a cool story. Right. But honestly, it just kind of like, it came from a lot of uh, interest in where the CBD market was going. Okay. And really what it was. Because when we were getting into it, like... I mean, no I remember, one, I remember no when really it, knew, I, you know? I remember hearing about it, it blew up, but I mean, when I think of CBD, I just think of a couple drops I put under my tongue right? <laughs> and it makes it feel better. Yeah. That's all I think. Um, so Dale, tell me, so Sean comes to you and says, I got an idea or what, like, tell me, take me through that. So Sean and I actually met on our mission. And so we hadn't really connected okay. up until maybe about a year and a half ago. Okay. We've been home for like three years. Um, and so he reached out just to go get some drinks and then we were just talking. Right. And so he presented me with this opportunity. And it's funny. I told my girlfriend before I went and had drinks, like if he presents me, cause I've been getting opportunities like business, like all the time. Right. right. And so I was like, if this is another one, honey, like I just don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> right. So we go get drinks and lo and behold, there is another business opportunity. You live but, in Utah. You're going to, you're yeah. going to get on the, <laughs> all the time. A day. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this one felt different because I think, so I was really excited about it because it was a new up and coming industry. There wasn't a lot of, so it hadn't pumped yet. We were talking about it before it had pumped. Um, yeah. And so it went from just a conversation and it has developed since into almost like a relationship with our business. You know, it's not just an entity. It's almost like a, a person. Right. And how we interact with that person determines like the quality of our day to a certain extent, but, um, very deep. I like it. Yeah. So it, it really is an emotional connection and you can yeah. relate right with your business. It's not just a business. No, right? like this is your baby. This is what you've cultivated from the very beginning. Right. And it's so more looking, than that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so you like it. You're like, you know what? I like what Sean told me. Mm -hmm. This is something I'm interested in. I mm -hmm. really want to pursue it. Kind of mm -hmm. what's, so what's the next step? Like, what did you guys say? Like, okay, let's do this. So what did you do from there? I'm not sure if a lot of people are just talkers, mm -hmm. but essentially when you sit down with someone and like, we've got a really awesome idea, you know, it might take a few weeks before something actually happens. Like the next conversation. Right. Um, within about three days of us having a conversation, like I was already going to the, to make the LLC. Right. And so okay. bank account and stuff. Um, I like it. And we had to um, kind of like finagle our way into a bank because they don't like working with CBD companies. Okay. So <laughs> we had to. Yeah. Well, so get to a really tell me that, like when you guys yeah. said CBD, mm. what was a lot of the response at first? Were people like, oh, like drugs? <laughs> or were they like, <laughs> oh, like I know what CBD is? Or were people like, what is CBD? Kind of what was the response when you guys started? Uh, honestly, it was a mix. Okay. You, people who were aware of what it was. They had already been educated, you know, because the first time they hear about it, the, usually the first thing they think is drugs. Right. You know? And so it really depends on who we are talking to. It's funny that you brought that up because when we first started, uh, we had one product and we were going like store to store. It's like, hey, we got one, you know, one tincture product and stuff and we we're showing it to people. And even though we were wholesaling, there were other CBD products in there. A lot of the people that I'd be trying to sell to, I'd still be explaining it to them. Because they'd be getting into CBD just for the money of it because it was growing. Right. And not, you know, understanding really what it is. And right. so I think the for the majority of the part, like people have thought it's drugs. Right. And people, especially in this area, because we've done a lot of like communicating the local people. Right. And we're finding that it's re-educating is what we have to do. Because honestly, people just don't understand the difference between like what a CBD product does for someone. And then, you know, what is the plant? Right. I think so, it's cool because I mean... 
a lot of people they they try to catch onto something ha- hot like crypto and they're like yeah. I'm gonna make a lot of money on this <laughs> or things like CBD oil I'm gonna make a lot of money on this and create a product and start selling it yeah but what I've you know just from the little bit we've talked to you guys really know what it is and you guys are educating a lot of people on it and helping people understand really what it does it's mm-hmm. not just a try to get rich <clears throat> rich quick because there's a cool CBD product you guys believe in what cbd can do for you and are building a line of cool products yeah you kind of have to just really love the industry honestly right because there's a lot that comes with it and the big part of that really is marketing so speaking to what sean was was saying about our one product we went through how many labels before we decided on one so i don't even know (laughs) we, we started this company with the intent so we named it nectar right and if you're familiar with Greek mythology, nectar is what the gods consume in order to have eternal life, right? Like it's their, it's their source of power. Okay. So that's where our branding came from is we're like, we want to make it. So it's like, this is eternal life. Like this is your best life. This is the way to live like a God. Right. And so we started <laughs> off with our branding being so Greek, you know, it's like, who the heck is going to buy this? Right? right. It was so, so niche defined. And so we've had to grow from that being our initial perspective. And that product obviously never even got to market. Okay. But we went from that to like the holistic using a plant as our, as our logo. And so it's crazy to see the development from what we had initially thought and when we decided to pivot and how we decided to pivot, like what were our motivations to pivot. Right. Um, so it's just been interesting looking back and seeing, or maybe just understanding more of the market. Right. Because we were talking about this earlier today. Like, what would you go tell yourself eight months ago? that you know Mm -hmm. now and honestly i feel like every lesson we've learned because that's all entrepreneurship is right lessons they've all built up to the point where we are today that if we had just gone back and told ourselves do this this and this we would have done it and maybe would have seen success faster but Mm -hmm. those lessons have been necessary for us to get where we are so it's like we, we need to go through those failures for sure to get where we are and so it's tough thinking about what I would want to say to myself. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, being an entrepreneur is hard. You know, I've started two or three <laughs> businesses and people think like, oh, entrepreneurs or start a business and it might do well and they make money. But it's like, you don't see the behind the scenes of what it takes. Mm-hmm. And yeah. an entrepreneur doesn't actually make money no. for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you've got to build something like there's no money to just be spared to give yourself into something like this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like what you said, you were, you know, you were learning, but something I'm curious to know is when you guys said, okay, let's take a CBD product. Like how do you make a CBD product and how do you decide what to put in it? Like I would be like, like do you contact like someone who manufactures that oil? Like what do you do? Like how did that happen? Yeah, there are different ways to do it. So some companies will go out and they'll, well, actually I'm going to back up. So it's important to know three things when you're creating a product and that's the sourcing, uh, what is inside of like, the product and then also um, how the manufacturing is happening. And so we actually get tests at all stages of that. Okay. Even from like the seed to the end product. And so a lot of people will go to uh, different sources online and try to create CBD products. But the problem with that is honestly, if they're not going to get those tests done that are necessary to prove what it is, what it says it is, then you really know what you don't know what you're getting. Right. And so that's where kind of the differentiation, diff, differentiation right. <laughs> comes in with manufacturers is unless they can really prove what they're saying, which there are some out there that have great products and you can go and like you said, white label with them and sell it. Right. Um, but unless they can prove it, you just don't know. And the industry is at a place where everyone is just doing their best to be the best. And so there are differentiations between every different manufacturer that you can find specific that one has and others don't. So for example, one might be really good at creating a CBD product, but the other is really good at creating a CBG product, which is actually something we could talk about another time. Okay. But they just all have like their strengths and weaknesses. Right. And so, um, you just have to know the market really well to know where to get good product and how to create good product. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like you're very, sounds like Sean is very educational when it comes to the CBD part of it. You know, (laughs) you know your stuff and you've really researched it, which is good for the brand. I mean, you can build a brand in something, but you know, you can advertise it all you want and try to get people to use it. But when you have someone that's passionate, like you guys are about like the actual product and helping people, that's yeah. when it will take <laughs> off because it's a passion that in the middle of the money will follow. Right. My very first podcast where I talked to Michael Taylor about finding your why. 
Mm. So he said, once you find your why and find something you're passionate about, you realize it's not about the money. It's about following that passion. Yeah. And as you do it, the money follows, which I can tell you get, you know, your stuff behind this. And it's really cool. Oh, thanks. Um, so, so you found a manufacturer, you got it made and then you guys are telling me, so you guys like, how do you, how do you prove this? You said you got like a medical endorsement or you got people to be like, this is what this stuff works. Explain that process and what it took to get a medical endorsement behind it. So like Sean was saying, the lab tests that are done at every stage, they're called certificates of analysis and they show the entire composition of the whole plant. And that's what doctors are looking for. They want to make sure that there's no additives, there's nothing nasty that's been thrown in there, that it's exactly what it says it is and it works. Okay. Because that's the biggest misconception with CBD right now Mm -hmm. is that it might just be snake oil, you know? Yeah. Because in a lot of states, you can actually manufacture CBD in your basement and sell it legally. Okay. Interesting. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because we're in Utah, obviously the rules are really strict. And so we have to jump through every single hoop to make sure that we are qualified. And so when we were introduced to Dr. Warren through our attorney. So they haven't heard that. Who is it? Dr. Stephen Warren. Dr. Dr. Stephen Warren. Yes. So we were introduced to him through our attorney who said that he was a very forward thinking doctor. He was actually a, he's a a leading researcher within the CBD field. He's nationally recognized and he's been doing stuff since 2015. Okay. So we were introduced to him through our attorney. We got him some products just to sample, just to see what his perspective was. And within a matter of days, he got back to us. He's, you know, very busy. And so a couple of days was pretty impressive. He right. told us that this, these were the best drops that he had ever come across. Wow. And so from there, I just went from conversation, a conversation from seeing how much time he had, if he wanted to be involved and if he did, you know, just what we could do with it. Because within the CBD space, having medical endorsement is big. And then within Utah, having medical endorsement from LDS doctors is even bigger. Right. Mm-hmm. And so. And he, Stephen Warren yep. is an LDS doctor. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's actually neighbors with the prophet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is, I mean, yeah, especially in Utah to mm-hmm. have that endorsement would yeah. be huge. Mm-hmm. Um, that's awesome. And what you said that he came back, I mean, what was it like when he came back to you guys and said, this is the best thing I ever said? Like, what was, what, what was your emotion at that moment? Very dreamlike. Yeah. You know, um, it gives me like chills thinking about it because it was right. like at that moment, Sean even said that, dude, I don't think that we realize how, how big this actually is. Right. And at the time we didn't. And so looking yeah. back, it gives us that perspective of like, holy crap, this is really big. This is a huge deal for us. Because if you look at any other CBD company, like they don't have a medical endorsement. They don't have doctors on their team unless those companies that I've seen are specifically, you know, named after that doctor. Right. Yeah. And so it's really unique to have third party medical endorsement. Right. And so, yeah, it was it was just that, absolutely crazy. I can imagine that. That it's always exciting when something like that happens, especially when it's for your baby, your business. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and then you have another medical endorsement too, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. From Dr. Yeah. Craig Campbell. Okay. Explain yeah. him. Dr. Craig Campbell. He's on the board of missionary work for the church um, okay. here in Utah as well. He's got a practice up in Midvale. Um, he used to be on the board of chiropractors for Utah. I'm not sure what the exact name of that club is, but you're good. <laughs> yeah. So he had to, Basically, every chiropractor in Utah knows who he is simply because he was the one that passed or failed them on their on their exam. Or okay, mm-hmm. and so what did how did you guys present it to him, and what is his role playing it? So he is a really close associate of Dr. Warren, and okay. they he Dr. Campbell is also an energy worker. He does things with, um, you know, healing energy, acupuncture, um, laser treatment, and stuff like that, and so. Dr. Mm. Warren, because he was so much of an advocate for our specific product, he's like, you need to go talk to my friend, Dr. Campbell, because everyone knows who he is. And so we went and spoke with him, and it probably took about two months of me buying mm-hmm. chiropractic treatment <laughs> before <laughs> he was willing to say, all right, I'm like, I'll, I'll join you guys. Nice. But, <laughs> he joined yeah. you and your back was in good shape. Yes. yes <laughs> I've, yeah, he's awesome. He's okay. incredible. So, so like when someone's purchasing, where do they see like, oh, there's a medical endorsement? Is that just something like you advertise on your website saying like, uh, hey, it's med- medically endorsed? Or like, what does that do for the company other than just like an advertisement? Actually, it's, it's pretty tough. Like we've brought on a marketing team to help us. 
right. with a lot of stuff we do because there are just so many regulations online and things right. you can't do. And one of them is talking about, you know, too much medical stuff on online. Right. Yeah, but there's definitely a, a line that, that you you might cross as a CBD company. We're pretty fortunate because we're still pretty small, so we can get away with accidentally saying things like right. uh, just changing words up instead of like our customers have used this to see, you know, benefits with anxiety, <laughs> which is the correct way to say it. We might accidentally say, um, you know, on our social media, like uh, this can help, which is still pretty ambiguous. Can help, you know, doesn't necessarily. Yeah. Right. But so it's just being careful there. But another reason as to why, so we're going through a rebranding. And so with rebranding, there are certain components that we need, like the label for our new bottle before we can really change things on the website. Right. And so that's being done actually this week. Everything is finished up with rebranding this week. We're having more products coming out subsequently over the next two months. Okay. And so from that point, we're really going to be able to hammer in this medical endorsement because it is relatively new to us. Right. And so being able to really launch with the medical endorsement is going to be huge. And we'll be able to do that online with this marketing team that knows how to stay compliant with everything. Okay. So you guys, so, I mean, I'm talking to you guys, the guys that started it. Who else is there? So you guys said like a marketing team, like are you just hiring third party people or have you hired, like, do you have employees Uh, kind of like how, like, so you guys started it, you, you built it. How did you scale from there? Like, did you bring more people on? Just kind of explain that. Um, yeah, I think honestly, we've worn all the hats that we possibly could. Um, but when something goes outside of our grade and then we know that we can pay someone to do a better job then you know, right. We'll, we'll, so we've used that for certain things like, uh, this company that we use for our marketing, they just, they're really good with knowing what they need to put online. Okay. What they shouldn't. So just a third, like, par- uh, third party yes. marketer. Oh yes. They, yes. they're a third party. Okay. Um, besides that, we do have uh, part of our own marketing team and it's been great because we have, you know, people run our Instagram and help us with that. But we also have like a, a strong hand in that. Right. And so we keep as much control as we can over the company, what we can do. But we're not afraid to delegate work. And Dale's really good at that. Right. That's his, best at his specialty. <laughs> Delega- <laughs> delegating Dale. is yeah. so important. Yeah. Yeah. Once you can learn how to delegate, because you as the owner of the business feel like you know exactly what you want and what you need. Uh-huh. But it's, it's a lot. You can't do everything perfect. Like. You can't do marketing and sales and mm-hmm. branding perfect. I mean, you could if you had the time for all that, but delegating mm-hmm. and knowing how to delegate is something important. Mm-hmm. But so like how many employees do you guys have or how many other people work with you right now? Uh, two. Yeah. Right so, now. So you guys and two more. Yes. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you guys plan on like bringing on more people? Like before, I don't want to get quite into the future yet. Just mm-hmm. I want to get what got you up to here. So like... Uh. So our biggest intention is to outsource is I think for me, at least as much as we can, if it's financially feasible. Right. So we're going to be hiring a company to do our fulfillment. We've okay. got someone doing our marketing, just like we told you. Right. Um, and then we're looking for like other distribution channels as well. Someone who can, like, we can outsource distribution to. Okay. Um, do you think, like you guys have said you're going around to stores. Do you put them in stores? Or is it mainly online? Like where do the bulk of your sales come from? Mm. Uh, let's see. When we first started, we were doing wholesales. And so a lot of the sales were coming from stores. Okay. Because we, we couldn't sell online. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> Until we grew to the point where we could. And so now we're seeing it's about evening out. You know, the sales online is, is meeting, meeting the sales that keep coming from wholesales. Okay. And so it's, uh, it's at a point where we're seeing like a scale in both areas. But okay. there's, we're always looking at what's next. What we need, what do we need to do to make it grow more? Right. Yeah. Um, can you tell me, so starting the company, did it take a lot of money to get going? Like to like make the product and get products on order? Like um, to tell me that part. I think that if, if, if we would never have made a mistake, I think that it wouldn't have cost us a lot of money. <laughs> right. Um, but because of all these learning experiences we've gone through, we've, we've, eh, I mean, money is all relative, right? Money right. amounts. So for a startup and what we've accomplished, I don't think that we've spent a lot of money. Right. We've gone through like, as many things as we can. Like, doing for like someone else starting a company, did you guys just fund it yourselves? Did you get a credit card? Did you get a business loan? So with CBD, you can't get either of those. Okay. So we've been funding it ourselves. Just self-funded. Yeah. Okay. Has that been hard or it's been like, like you said? It's stressful. Right. So sure. I, uh, I day trade Bitcoin. That's what I do to okay. keep the lights on. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just taking money out of my portfolio 
is where the stress comes from, especially when I can't spend as much time day trading. Right. And, you know, I'm not able to perform as well. Right. Day trading. And so it's like I'm taking money out of one of, you know, my money makers, my investments. Right. Into I, another did th- I mean, my story is the same exact thing. I day yeah. traded, mm-hmm. took the money yeah. out of my day trading account to start a hedge fund. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Is that smart? That's Who knows? Cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not to let those off, right? But, right. But so, okay. So you guys are self-funded. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys now have two employees. Mm-hmm. You guys are medically endorsed. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of what, what is the state of it right now? So like, are you guys just focusing on trying to get sales up or are you guys trying to, re- you said you're rebranding? Like what is your focus right now? So I think Sean and I take two different parts of the company. So Sean is obviously incredible at product development and making sure that the right things are in the product. Right. Um, and he's also been doing wholesales because he's great at doing that. Okay. Um, I've been doing a lot of the, the marketing and making sure that, you know, we've got the images coming in and simple stuff like that. Right. So right now it's kind of like we're coming out of a weird limbo stage if we're being honest, you know, because of the rebranding, we can't really sell or push our new product without having, product itself right so the the rebrand was to nectar cbd products right or you're rebranding from that we were rebranding just the logo okay and just basically the The font yeah yeah the font it's like we're moving from we were significantly more medical you know we would be looking at using us as like uh, an alternative to opiates and stuff like that okay now we're much more focused on beauty products and so the difference in a medical medical company Right. The beauty product company is the transition. That transition, you know, what led you to that transition from going from like medical mm. products to, you know, beauty products? I think, honestly, when you're doing medical, it's almost like there are only so many products you can do medical, honestly. Right. Uh, if you have a tincture, that's like one of the most potent ways you can get CBD. Another one is water soluble. But you get two of those products and like you're hitting like 80% of the medically bought cbd products in the market right and so past that it starts getting into topicals and it starts getting into longevity in other ways too and so we're really trying to just nail the longevity and um using cbd for all the ways that it can be used because if we were just to use medical and not go into beauty we'd be shorthanding ourselves right honestly there are so many ways to use cbd especially when it comes to topicals that you're not using it right if you don't like recognize that potential okay yeah i, yeah, I think that, like what you said at the beginning just like soaps and bath mm-hmm. bombs and right facial stuff like i think it's a genius because yeah. cbd is great for people but like to to just ins- like like i said i thought it was just a couple of drops on your tongue uh-huh. but to know like you guys are like you can branch out and there's so many more things you can include in mm-hmm. and tons of health benefits associated right. with those changes too yeah right Definitely. i mean that's genius that's a good way to take it i think you guys are doing the right thing also if i can mention one more thing yeah go so ahead even topicals when you're using things like that the product can go underneath the subdermal layer of the skin and get into that endocannabinoid system. So that's a system that is actually taking in the CBD to create those effects that we like CBD to have. Okay. And so that's why people use it for arthritis and stuff like that. Okay. And that's why, you know, there is, there are so many benefits from topicals that people just, they just don't notice, right. you know, but they don't, they don't think the CBD will work. They don't realize that it is entering that endocannabinoid system. Right. So, and I mean, I like being on this podcast because I hope you guys can refer everyone to this so they can kind of hear all the great things they can use it for. But like, how do they, how do you get that out? Is it just like through posting on Instagram, like posts, like this is what you can use it for also. Like, how do you try to yeah. get that out to let people know what they can use it for? Uh, we try to, yeah. uh, Dale, Dale's really good with the posts and the information and he runs that kind of stuff really okay. well. Yeah. Like, so we'll, we'll be creating content for our SEO purposes based off of, you know, research and things like that, where people can Google a question about how to use CBD or what benefits CBD has, and it will link yeah. them to our website, which will have all of these different uses and benefits. And okay. Like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's great we guys have now, but I want to get now, you know, like this is where you guys are at, your thought process behind it, your rebranding, but where do you guys see yourself like in six months from now? Are you six months to a year from now? Like where do you see Nectar CBD products? Like, what do you see the vision of the company six to six months a year from now? It's a fun thought. It really is. Um, I would say that optimistically within six months, we should be seeing at least five figures of revenue per month from our online website. Okay. Um, within six to 12 months, we will have probably another six to eight products that we'll be offering. Okay. 
I so. like that. That's mm-hmm. a, that those are good yeah. goals. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you no, know, six figures a month is a great goal. It's exciting. Um, so tell me now, like the dream. What do you see mm-hmm. ten years from now? Like, what do you guys see Nectar CV products turning into? Like, what do you hope you can look back and back at this? This became. Hmm. Wow, that's a deep yeah one. I think like the ultimate dream, like one hundred percent, all the way out there. Right, is that Nectar has become a lot more than just what it is in a way that so like Sean and I are really big into meditation, okay, um, and just an overall sense of like spiritual well being. And so if we can tie in CBD, because it does help promote things like spirituality and, right. you know, being more in tune with yourself. So if we could have like spas, meditation centers that are extremely okay. high like quality that. luxury, like you fly mm-hmm. out to a foreign country because it's all about so like spiritual growth. It's really right. big, right? So if you can put someone in an environment where they are kind of forced to grow spiritually, so sending them to somewhere where it's new, they're not comfortable with it, they might not have access to their cell phone. Right. You know, something that will put them in a place where they are able to experience incredible things. Right. And tie that back in with CBD mm-hmm. and nectar and having that be a proponent for that. That's awesome. I mm-hmm. mean, my first podcast for Quest for Doe, um, he helped me find my why and like really put me into like a state of mind of like understanding what brings me happiness. Like, mm-hmm. Um, but the way he's found this and done this is because he goes to places like where you go in focus and he's like a big believer in, you know, meditation and just reflecting and stuff like that. And I think CBD products or something like you guys are wanting to build would be a great thing for that, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, definitely the mind is so strong and your will is so strong and what you put out there, you can get back mm-hmm. and you yeah. guys truly believe that and mm-hmm. your product is kind of like like a door into that mm-hmm. mindset. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Nectar is very it's uh, like the bare bones for what we really want to do, you know. It's right. literally yeah. just the gateway into the kingdom, the empire, whatever you <laughs> right. like to call it. Yeah. In fact, our slogan is uh, elevate because honestly what we're trying to do is lift up people's, you know, lives, their energy, their quality. I like and it. That's what we found out of using CBD in, in the industry, so that's what yeah, that's what we're about. Right. <laughs> that's why we're in it. And do you guys feel like, like, how do you feel like you guys have grown personally from just this company oh, now? Yeah. Holy cow. A lot. Yeah, it definitely, you know, I mean, I, I'm not a dad, so I can't equate that necessarily. <laughs> right. But I feel like watching this thing grow under our, like, care and, and tutorship, essentially, is just, it gives you a different perspective on life, I think one where you are 100 percent accountable for everything that happens right and if it doesn't happen it's on you right so having that perspective of failure or winning is based all on me puts a different perspective on like life you you see life through a different colored lens right yeah so i would say that whatever lessons that come with being responsible for everything including you know your partner or like your employees Right. It's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. I mean, I started Hedge Fund, but with the bridal shop, we have 25 employees. And mm-hmm. it's like, my wife explains it in our second episode. Um, but like, really helping pe- other people. Like, once she, my wife understood, like, it's not about the business, it's about helping my employees. Like, you just really, like, there's there's deeper feeling than, mm-hmm. you know. It's like sacrificing. Right. Like you're becoming yeah. so selfless that at some point you are sacrificing for the business. And that sense of sacrifice is, uh, I think it's, it's huge for growth. Yeah. Personally, have you, have you read man's search for meaning by Viktor Frankl? I have not, but so I'll put he, that on my list. It's a really good one. He is a Holocaust doctor, a survivor from the Holocaust. He was a doctor. Okay. Um, and so he has come up with three different ways that people find satisfaction or, or fulfillment through life. And it's accomplishing something loving someone or, or like suffering, sacrificing. Okay. And so in a way it's like being an entrepreneur because you are sacrificing, you know, the, maybe the traditional lifestyle of getting a nine to five, being comfortable with your, with not having any risk, right? You go to work and the risk is handled by your boss or the owner, but taking on that risk personally brings with it that sense of sacrifice and ultimately fulfillment. Right. And so 
It's a tough question to ask. No, I, uh, I love that. Cause I mean, when I've been interviewing people so far, it's just, it all comes back to that. They really find like they're helping others. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I've realized, you know, that's what brings you true happiness, doing what you're passionate about, helping others. It's great when the success follows or it comes, but like the reason it does is because you found something you're truly passionate about mm-hmm. and there's more to it gain yeah. personally from that mm-hmm. yeah than the tangible things it, ter- it becomes a lot more genuine exactly so, like, everything that is developing is like developing inside of you too you know right it's crazy this is awesome i i know and you know i knew a little bit about your guys company but it's been fun listening to kind of like what it has become kind of how you started uh-huh. how quickly it started and like the vision you guys have for it. it's exciting mm-hmm. um so you know i want to bring you guys back on you know six months sure. see how it's going what you've learned or a year i want to follow this quest um and then people that are listening right now if you're interested you know you can reach out to them pretty sure you guys would love getting messages asking anything oh, about you've learned yeah um or your their instagram is just nectar cbd products mm-hmm. you can go give them a follow purchase some of the products which you've heard are amazing um but yeah as i said this is kind of like a journal for you guys so is there anything last thing you want to say Thank you yeah. for this opportunity. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, of course. Yeah, really cool. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys, you know, I hope you guys do everything you're hoping to. And I really do think you guys can do it. You guys have the vision for it. Thank you. Cody. appreciate it. Man. Yeah, of course. And this has been awesome. It's been an incredible experience, really. Good. I'm glad. So, <laughs> okay, well, we'll talk next time. And I'm honestly really excited to follow up with you guys. So we we'll see you from there. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to get out with the song and. We'll head out. See you guys. See ya.